what if I told you that in order to get your prayers answered from God, a key component that is needed is to have an altar. Now, you may not have heard this before, but consider this for a moment. Can you define what is an altar? Do you, do you, can you explain it? And the reason why I ask this is because if I was to ask 100 different Christians, I possibly would get 100 different answers. And if you're like me, who would go back to the Old Testament and look at the original Hebrew word that was used for to translate to altar, to try to get a, a better understanding of it, all you will find is altar. It doesn't give any more details, any more explanation, any more definition of what is an altar. And if you try to go to the New Testament and look at the Greek word to see who, maybe you can get some more information on what is an altar, all you will find is an altar is a place of sacrifice. Now, for me, that doesn't give much information because a question you will start to ask is why would God want me to sacrifice in this specific place? Why? There must be a reason. And yes, there is a reason. You see, an altar is really a gateway or portal, whichever word you prefer using, that is what an altar is. And I'm going to show you some scriptures which you know about, but you never thought about it that way. And it's just going to make much more sense. Remember in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel, he got a dream from God. He didn't understand the dream, but he got this dream. Now we know that God wanted him to have the interpretation of the dream because it was very important in order for us to understand end time prophecies. But yet still, he, do, he just got the dream, no interpretation. And Daniel decided that he was going to set his face to seek God. He was going to fast for 21 days. Well, he never said, he never set out how many days he was going to fast for, but he eventually fasted for 21 days and praying, seeking God for an answer. Now, on the 21st day, an angel of the Lord showed up. I said, Daniel, man greatly beloved, I want you to understand, from the first day that you prayed, God answered your prayer. Yeah, but it took 21 days, right? Now, he explained to him that, hey, the reason why I took 21 days was because when I was sent from the first day, the prince of Persia would stood me for these days, 21 days. But... God sent Michael, which is a, a angel at the an archangel, high ranking angel, and he was the one that moved the prince of Persia. Now the prince of Persia would have been at the level of a principality, right? So these are the demons that rule over nations, and this was a strong demon, and he was blocking the first angel. But because God sent Michael, praise God, the first angel was released. And he could come and give the interpretation of the dream. But here's the thing. Why would God, who is all-knowing, waited 21 days to send Michael when he knew from the very first day that the first angel would have been blocked by this principality? Why? Well, when you understand altars, it all makes sense. Israel was in the land of Persia. It was not their land, but because they sinned, they were brought into captivity. Now, in the land of Persia, there was no altars that was being built for the Lord. So, because of this, Michael um, did not have any jurisdiction in that era because he is the angel um, that is set over Israel. He is the archangel for Israel. Now, in order to get Michael in to come into Persia, you needed a gateway for that. Now, because they were the children of Israel were not sacrificing, they weren't building any altars unto the Lord in that era. There was no gateway. But Daniel, after 21 days of fasting, he was able to build an altar 
that in the spiritual realm that would accommodate an angel at the, that rank that could come in and assist him and bring and allow the first angel to come and bring the answer to the prayer. Now, Daniel, I don't believe he understood what he was really doing, but nevertheless, it worked. Praise God. It is a gateway. That's what an altar is. Now, if it was in the land of Israel, chances are maybe Daniel would not have made it past the 21 days because there would have been an altar somewhere, somewhere in the area that Michael could have entered in and assisted. But here's the thing. Daniel would have had, Daniel because he was fasting, well, praying, sorry, for 20, praying three times a day, rather. He would pray three times a day. Because of that, he would have his own personal altar. But that personal altar was not sufficient for an archangel. But after 21 days, it opened a portal, a gateway that could accommodate an angel at, at, at that rank. And think about this. Remember when the disciples tried to cast out the demon out of the, the, the little boy in Mark chapter 9. Now, when they tried to cast out the demon, they could not do it. But Jesus came on the scene and demon gone. Now, they questioned Jesus and said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said, listen, this guy ain't going up by prayer and fasting. Now, consider this. Consider, and and then you, you make much more sense. The disciples were not fasting during those days when Jesus was alive. So because of that, they did not have an altar, their own personal altar that was sufficient that could accommodate an, an angel at a higher rank. So because of this, remember, when we pray, and we are even we command demons to leave, the angel of the Lord comes in and he assists us. We don't see it, but they are working behind the scene. Now, because they did not have an altar that could deal with the rank of demon that they were facing, facing, they couldn't remove it. But Jesus, who fasted for 40 days and 40 nights before he started his ministry, would have that um, altar that could accommodate a higher rank of angel. And so for him, was us go, and the demon was gone. Now, remember, coming back to what I mentioned earlier, that in order for us to get our prayers answered from God, we need an altar. Our, a key component is having an altar. Praise God. Remember in the book of Hebrews, it says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace in times of need. Now, how is it are we are going to enter into the throne room of God that is in the third heaven, and I am on earth. How, how is this possible? Now, remember, as I said before, an altar is a gateway. And if you understand this, then you see how is it we can enter in the throne room. Because in Psalms 100, it says, Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, remember, the Bible also says that let it come, let us offer up the sacrifices of praise. So our thanksgiving, our praises, our worship is acting as a sacrifice on an altar. And the more we put on that altar is the, the gateway opens up to the heavenlies. And therefore, now we cannot enter through that gateway to go into the throne of God. And not only that, we can the angels of the Lord can now come through that gateway, praise God, and they can come with the answers. And that's it. That is how an altar assists us in getting our prayers answered. And the bigger or stronger the altar that we have, the, the gateway, is the more of the presence of the Lord that is now entering into the world, the earth. And the angel of the Lord that will assist will come in and will assist us. So, but this is something that I want us to get because 
You can praise and you can worship God, but it's just so far that we get us. That may just get us to the, the, the entrance, to the throne room. But the closer we can get to the throne itself, is the, 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 the greater presence of God we're going to get, the higher the ranks of angels that is going to be there to assist us in the things that we're going to request from God. But I know you probably have a lot of questions, like how to build an altar. In fact, we're right now in the New Testament where you know we, we don't build any physical altar, we don't make any physical sacrifices. So, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that when it comes to an altar, that's the only thing, you know, it's not, it, it's not, it, there may be other components to it, but what I'm focusing on is the gateway. Is the gateway. Now, how do you build an altar? Good question. I'm going to deal with that in another video. So, if you like this video and it has provided any benefit to you, subscribe, and like it, and share with someone so that they can also benefit. And I know I've been a while since I've created any videos, but praise God, I'm back. So, pray my strength that I will continue to make as much videos as possible. God bless you.